Welcome back to Meshman Studio. I create tutorials about texturing, look dev, and VFX. And today's episode is gonna be about Mori bake points in the No Graph. So, bake points in uh, Mori No Graph, what is it and what's it good for? Absolutely nothing. No, seriously, uh, bake points is a way to manage complexity in the Mori No Graph. So let's see here what we can do with them. So first off, why do we need bake points? And that's a good question. If we look here at my no graph, you see there's a lot of things happening here. This part here is essentially where I blend materials. So each of these sections here is like a material. They are all blended using masks here. Going up here, blending them. So this is essentially how I managed materials before the material system. So material system under the hood is doing similar things, but we have nodes that do all of this instead of me having to build this every time. So that's a good thing. We have masks over here and you can see here, there's a lot of things going on. And in the end, when you do any texturing, after a while, Mari might become slow. For example, here, if I inspect here, this one here, we can see here, Mari up here in the corner, we can see here I have my frame per second counter. And we can see here, yeah, it's when I spin this, it's really fast here. And it has around 300, 200 frames per second when I look at this. And that's because I here have my shader going into here and you see all of these red nodes essentially is bake points. So anything upstream of these bake points is disregarded in Mori sense. When they are red, that means that something is out of sync. That's because I've altered something upstream of these nodes. So they need to re be rebaked. So yeah, that's a way to use kind of like a cache system in the no graph. So let's dive into what we can do with them. So let's create one from scratch first here. If I look at this merge node here, so here we see this is what we have. And so create a bake point, you just hit tab and type bake point. And there we have this loose bake point. It's not connected to anything at the moment. So if I take this one and route it into there. Now, if I go into this, the node properties for this bake point here, and just out of the bat, hit bake here, it will bake it. Let's go back here and create another one, bake point. You can see here, you get a menu here when you create the bake point. The size here is the patch size. That's essentially the same as a channel node. If I would create a channel node, I get asked to say what patch size each patch will have when I export it. So the bake point, this is the resolution that it will bake down to and going into the UV editor. Looking at this, this is a, the one of these is a patch. And in my case, each of these will be 4K by 4K resolution. You can see here, that's a lot of them around the 40 something UDIMs here on this asset. So baking a bake point will then freeze everything upstream. So let's do that. Let's bake this just out of the bat. Yeah, so okay, you can see here now it's baked and it's green and that means that everything upstream of this one is in sync. And you can see here, I probably need to rebake this because something has happened since I baked this. So that's an indicator. If it's red, it means that it's out of sync. If it's green, it means that it's all fine and dandy. Everything within this bake point is kind of considered being paint data, but you can't paint on a, a bake point. It's just baked data. So if you do something upstream of it, it will reflect in it becoming red. So demonstrate that. Let's create a merge node. Just insert it in between this merge and that bake point. It's gonna be like this node it's gonna become dirty, so to say. So let's see here, if I now hover here until I get a yellow line there, and it's gonna be inserted there. So you can see here now, you can see this one is introduced after I baked it. So in that sense, the bake point will become red. 
and that's an indicator that you need to rebake it. So let's do something here. Let's create a paint node, go here on top there and rebake this. After I've painted, I just need to paint something there. So we have a clear visual difference that something has actually updated. Okay, let's bake this down and we can now see that when I go back to the bake point, it will be the previous data, not the new data. Going back and visualizing the bake point there, you can see now it's gonna be the, the data before I baked it. Okay, uh, let's now just rebake. What you can do, you can rebake by hitting the bake button here again. You can also delete bake. It's gonna be like resetting. So now it's essentially doesn't contain a data. So now it's passing through and then you can just select it and rebake. So let's rebake that now so it becomes green. Okay, so now it's rebaked and it will reflect here that the change I did upstream is also incorporated here. So that's a good thing. Okay, so what happens now if you start to do stuff downstream of this? Let's say that you wanna add stuff here. So essentially it's a way to optimize anything upstream and also, if you by any chance do stuff here to this one here, let's say that we create a paint node downstream here of this merge here. I wrote it in here and I wanna add some additional details. So let's take something here. Let's say that I wanna add some uh, additional breakup here. And I wanna overlay this, for example go into my merge here and say uh, contrast overlay and I take the strength down here like this so that yeah there's some kind of break up there looking like that but then we later on we say okay this doesn't look so convincing I need to do something about that so what you can do here let's say that you made a change upstream here you go back to this merge node here and let's say that now I'm, I'm gonna take this away here and you can see here now this one becomes red so I go back here and I can see here the change I made there it's gonna be still baked in here so you can see here yeah this one is red here so I need to either rebake this but you can also disable it temporarily just to see what happens upstream so you can hit the D button and that's gonna kind of dim it. So now we can see here, now anything, you, this one is gonna become a pass-through node. You can see here, the bake point essentially is not evaluated now. So now it's hidden, but it's still connected. So the first node that's actually contributing is this merge node and everything upstream of it. If I hit the again, it's gonna be brought back. And now we can see here, the paint here, if I look at this one, it's gonna come back here after a while here. And there you go, it's back again. So yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a cache node and it also maintains speed. Okay, so let's take a look at some use cases now for bake points when I use them. Looking here at my graph here, we can see here, yes, I definitely usually have them in the end of my materials. If I want to have a, a fast preview, I uh, bake down my, my uh, result here and feed it into the shader in the end. That's kind of like the last optimization. But I also have it on very complex materials. For example, if I have something that's really heavy, if I have a lot of procedurals, I stick it in somewhere where my FPS counter starts to dip down. I might insert a bake point to optimize things. I would probably have, yeah, you see, I have one here in the end of this dirt mask here because this one is shared into other locations. So if this mask becomes really heavy, it might slow the whole comp down in the end. So that's a way to optimize things. So I have a bake point there. Okay, so here's another example where I use bake points. If I have something that's really heavy, for example, some of the procedurals might become super heavy if I uh, crank up the values. 
Let's take a look at this texture scatter triplonar projection uh, node here. This is an extension pack node and sometimes some of the nodes is really heavy and instead of having a live pattern I insert a bake point to bake it down into paint rather than having it uh, as a procedural applied. You can see here now this one is, is kind of okay here actually looking at it but uh, there's other examples where you might insert a bake point to actually bake down the result. So yeah that's another occasion when I use bake points. Okay, so I want to take a look here at another recently added feature to the bake point. So if we create one here, bake point, we define the patch size as normal. Just go with that. Look at this now. Let's say that you have this material here. We have the rubber patches here or the rubber tires. It's essentially like glued on pads onto some metal. The only material or the only region that I'm really interested in is, is these pads here that lives onto this metal uh, cylinder. But the material is kind of, if I look at this, it comes here, it's a procedural material. So most of it is defined here by different bakes and uh, projections or tree prana projections and uh, these type of things. So it's a long chain of uh, procedurals merged together. But the only thing that I want out of this node here, the bake point, is essentially just these ones here. If I select these patches here and that one. So this is the one I need to bake. But traditionally, before this update that came recently, I had to still bake everything. And that's something now we can limit. So let's take a look at that. If I select the bake point, go to limit bake range here and hit this one. Now we need a way to input what patches to bake. So there's a few options to do that. We can go here and manually insert the numbers here or we can select the patches and then go to this one, the little icon there and set to current patch selection. And you can see here now we get the numbers on the patches that needs to be baked. So that's a good thing. You can also do a selection set. So let's do that. Let's create something. Let's create this one here. This is the one I wanna select and go here to my selection groups, open it up, hit the plus sign there and type something. My awesome rubber selection, like so. Okay, now I'm going to have a uh, selection called exactly that. So we can uh, now here go here, let's clear this and go here again, select uh, set to patch selection group and we get a pop up and you can see here I already defined it a few times here, but let's take this one and it's going to be the same selection there. So now instead of baking everything when I hit this limit bake range, it's gonna bake only those patches. So that's gonna cut off a lot of time if you lay out your materials and the UVs on uh, corresponding patches. So I encourage that. So let's bake this now. It's gonna be much faster than uh, baking everything. And there we see. Yeah, so one thing we can see here, it became transparent. So what's that all about? And that's because it only baked the patches that I selected and rest of it gets this background color. So we can see here, yeah, we might need to set this to something else. Transparent might be fine, but generally in texturing, it's good to have some kind of color. So you can specify here. In my case, you see alpha is set to zero. That's why it's transparent. If I dial this up, you can see it's gonna take the color we have specified. So you could essentially take whatever color you want here. But yeah, maybe black is okay there. Okay, so now it's only gonna bake these patches that's limited here. So that's a good thing when you have materials. In my case here, you see here, all of these backdrops here is its own material. And it's have all of these streams here that you're going here from left to right is essentially the same uh, I use up here to blend. And I transmit all of this data 
using radio nodes. Uh, radio nodes is something I'm gonna cover later. So let's take a look at some other options here for bake points. So we have different tabs here. So let's take a look at the export tab here. And this is a way to actually export the bake data. So if I look at this one, it's essentially like a channel node in itself and we can actually export direct here our uh, paint straight out from this location. So we can either do it here by just filling in here, say export baked, browse to a location and export it out. Or we can go here to the export manager and add the export items up here and we can find our bake points. So yeah, you see uh, it's important and to have a serious name there. So let's take a step back and do that. Call bake. So let's now go back here to my export manager, add new export item and say call bake. So now we have a location that we can export out in uh, the same fashion as a uh, channel. So that's an option. We also have geo channel. So I will cycle back uh, to this feature in the next episode. Actually, I'm not going to cover it now. Yeah. So lastly here, I want to take a look at different ways to interact with bake points in the edit menu. So we can right click and go to edit and we find this bake points. So yeah, this is some settings here. So here's a just a simple scene here. I have a cloud and I pipe one bake point here straight from the cloud. I have a merge node that's I painted on top and I bake it. Then I have a merge node. So let's add something there as well, like a noise. Water noise, for example. Yes, I have something here. Let's take a look at this node here. Yes, quickly. Let's set it to something like so. So we have three different states here. So there's a few options that we can do. First off, we can just, we can select the bake point and uh, go here under edit, bake point, bake selected. And it's gonna bake this one. Let's delete the bake. Let's select them all. One, two, three. Let's see what happens. Edit, bake selected. Okay. There you go. Now they are bait. This one looks like that. This one looks like so. And this one is the result of that. Let's delete uh, the bake again. Okay, so now it's clean there again. We have another option here. Let's just first say edit bake points say smart bake and update and see what happens. I should bake all of the nodes that's not baked there. And it goes through them here. Yeah, delete baked again. I generally select like smart bake or just the bake selected, but there's also some here that I'm not so familiar with, to be honest. Let's take this one, just select the cloud here and say edit bake point update downstream. It should be similar, I think. It's gonna bake everything downstream here. So now let's go in to this merge here and just set the transparency to something else there. So you, these two middles are gonna go out of date because this one triggered that. And that in turn triggered this one. So what we can do is to say, let's try this one again. Bake point update downstream. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's kind of uh, some of the settings we can do here under the edit menu. So experiment and see what happens with all of that. I would like to hear your take on the Morinograph. What do you like about it and what don't you like about it? Leave it in the comment section. And why don't you also hit that uh, subscribe button if you haven't already? so you don't miss when I do one of these tutorials. See you in the channel, bye bye.